Have you ever had a hard time getting over your ex? I'm talking about even when you still have feelings for them, because let's be real, that happens all the time. But listen, I am going to break down to you guys 12 practical ways that you can get over your ex if you still have feelings for them. So stay tuned. Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Keeping It Real with Keandra. I am your host, licensed marriage and family therapist, Keandra Jackson. Now, I know breakups can be hard. I mean, really hard, like probably one of the worst things that you can experience. But I can guarantee that if you are truly ready to move on, if you know your ex was not the person that you were supposed to be with and you need to reconcile, to move on, to move forward, to be better, but you still got a little bitty, 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 bitty of residue, still a little bitty, 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 bitty of feelings for your ex, this video is for you. And trust me, I'm not here to judge because trust and believe I have been in that boat too but thank goodness once I understood how to move forward and move on from somebody that I wasn't supposed to be with, I knew that I needed to do that for myself so I could attract the right person. I'm so glad that you're here watching this video because I wanna help you do the same. So these are in no particular order and I'm gonna try to go through them as quickly as possible so this video won't be a million years long. But before I do, make sure to comment below. Have you ever still had feelings for your ex after you broke up? And if you did, what did you do to get over him or her? The first one is to accept your feeling. Oftentimes we try to rush, move on, pick up the pieces so quickly that we do not allow ourselves to feel how we feel, especially if you've been in a long term relationship with this person, you've been with them for years, or you have children with them, or you guys live together. It takes a while to break up your space, untwine, unwind your lives together and get in a position where you're like, okay, this happened. I'm no longer with this person. I still care about them. I might still love them. I'm feeling some emotions. I feel sad. I feel angry. I feel whatever. Fill in the blank emotion you have. Let those feelings come up and bubble up. Too often we are told to move on. He wasn't nothing. She wasn't nothing. Let it go. Just forget them. Go be with somebody else to fill the void. No. Feel how you need to feel. Do not suppress it. Don't push it down because the only way that you're going to get healed and resolve this issue is if you let it bubble up to the surface and you deal with it as is. The second thing you need to do in order to get over your ex if you still have feelings is you need to cut off contact all contact as much as possible. You cannot still call and text that person and be on their social media and looking and scrolling and seeing who they're with now and where they're going and talking to their mama. And no, 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 no. That is going to prolong the process. You need to give yourself space from that person. If you need to delete their number out of your phone, if you need to unfollow them or block them on social media, if you need to not talk to their sister, their mama, their cousin, a friend no more whatever you need to do you need to create the space and the time to distance yourself not only from that person but the thing that reminds you of that person which essentially is mutual people that you guys once knew so for a while you might have to avoid certain places that y'all went to or just try to do something that is going to put you in a space where you're not thinking about it so intensely because we know that those emotions bubble up to the surface and it feels like it's just so overwhelming. It feels like it's never going to get better. And I need for you to put certain things in place so you won't have to wallow in that feeling all of the time. The third way to get over your ex if you still have feelings is to set boundaries. This one is specifically for the people who still have to have some type of contact with their ex because they have some type of shared responsibilities or shared commitment. That means, again, if you guys got kids together, if you can't just, you know, no longer co-parent effectively. Like if, if you guys live together or had bills or credit cards or, you know, a house or whatever it was that you guys had combined and shared, you have to talk about what that's going to look like moving forward. So does that mean, hey, we only communicate when this bill is due? Does that mean, hey, we establish the pickup, the drop-offs and, you know, quality time with the kids as much as possible and stick to that schedule? What does that look like? I even know now that there's a big thing with people who live together or in relationship and they share pets. 
So I know someone and multiple multiple other people and old clients of mine who had dogs together, right? It's like they were together, they were in a relationship, they had a dog, and now they broke up. Who gonna take care of the dog? <laughs> Where the dog going? What's the frequency and the schedule? Are we letting it go? Is somebody saying, hey, now you can have it? What is that? What does that look like? Because if both parties had an attachment to this pet, it is kind of hard to let it go. It's almost like kind of sorter, but not really like a baby, right? There's that same type of commitment. So whatever boundaries, commitments, um, obligations that you had, you want to honor your word. You want to be a man and a woman of your word and figure out what that looks like so you guys can get things taken care of. The fourth way to get over your ex if you still have feelings is to reflect on the past relationship. Now, I know you're probably like, well, duh, I can't stop thinking about it. It is overwhelming me. And I mean to talk about it and reflect on it in a positive manner. Not like he wasn't, sh she wasn't, sh I never want to see them again. They cheat. Le le le. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about reflecting on the good, the bad, the indifferent and everything in between. Because I can guarantee you that it wasn't 100% bad all the time. Because if you were in a relationship where it was 100% bad, all the time, the, it's on you, boo. <laughs> I don't know any relationship, honestly, where there was bad just 100% of the time. Like that doesn't happen. You have, even if it's small moments, you have moments of happiness and goodness and you know, all of those things. So just be mindful and reflect on the relationship because you were also involved in it. People don't like me when I say this, but how did you contribute to the breakup? How did you contribute to the breakup? Because it wasn't one party. Were you not communicative? Were you overbearing? Were you anxious? What you had a part in it, even if it was cheating and you like, he did everything, but what ran him to go cheat? Was there something missing? Was there something longing in the relationship? I'm not saying that it is the victim's part or fault but they do have a part in this, right? I am not a licensed marriage and family couples, their relationship therapist for a reason, right? I know that both parties are oftentimes involved. The heartbreaker and the heartbreaky. <laughs> so assess the situation. And what I like to do and what I encourage people to do, even though this is super duper old school, is to create a pros and cons list. So that means literally take a piece of paper, Fold that thing in half, write pros on the top and write cons on the other end. And I want you to write all of the positive, all of the good things that happened, all of the good things that that, per that person was, everything that you can think of. And then write all of the negative, all of the bad things, all of the experiences, what led to the breakup, all of that on there as well. And listen, it does not matter which side of the list is more or less because if people do this assignment and they're like, there's so many more cons than the pros. I knew I broke up with him for a good reason. And it's like, hold on. Some things that are on the list might carry a little bit more weight, right? There might be something about like, oh, he didn't pick up his socks. <laughs> and then it might be something different where it's just like, oh, our core values, he believed this and I didn't. That has a lot more weight, right? Than the freaking socks on the floor. So it's not just about the number and which list and what side is longer. It's about the weight of those things. And this also isn't just to look at the numbers and say, okay, cool, I'm gonna make a decision. It's about kind of getting that thing out, reflecting on the relationship. So you can think about the pros, the cons, the good, the bad, everything in between. And then that can help you with the healing process. Before I move on, I know I'm spending a whole bunch of time on this, but this is also going to help you understand what worked and what didn't work in the relationship. But also you can implement and figure those things out so you won't repeat patterns when you do get into the next relationship. So it's important for you to analyze the relationship, analyze yourself as well, so you can go and be in a relationship next from a healed place. The fifth way to get over an ex if you still have feelings is to lean on your support system. I hope and pray that all of you guys who are experiencing breakups at least got one, at a minimum, at least one person that you can go to, that you can talk to, that's not going to judge you, that's going to be there for you, whether that's a family, a friend, a coworker, or whatever, but you at least have somebody that you can talk to objectively about this situation and just let it all out, vent, 
purge. Just allow that person to listen to you. They don't even have to fix anything because they can't do anything anyway. But you just need a trusted person that's going to support you on this healing journey, who's going to hold you accountable so you won't backtrack, so you won't put the number back in your phone, so you won't scroll on his social media, so you won't pull up at his house. Somebody that's going to hold you accountable to say, okay, baby, I know this is hard, but I got you. I'm here for you. And we're going to get through this together. Sixth way to get over an ex if you still have feelings is to limit revisit visiting memories. I know a lot of us got old pictures in our phone or pictures maybe around your house. I mean, you used to go to certain places because you guys went there together, certain restaurants, movie theaters, all of these different things. Limit revisiting those memories. Don't think, oh yeah, I'm okay. I can scroll through all of the memories that we've had over the last four years and I'm gonna be fine. I'm gonna be tough. No, that's going to trigger the heck out of you, okay? Especially because you're going through the healing process. You haven't arrived yet, boo. You're not fully over him. The whole point of this video is if you still have feelings for him. So this isn't the time, especially when it's a fresh, new, open wound to go down, scrolling down, strolling down memory lane. This, this isn't the time for that. So I'm not telling you that you can't reminisce and if he pops up in your mind that you have to just completely shut it down. But it is important for you to know looking at old pictures and text messages and call logs and whatever things that they bought you, all of these things is, is probably gonna slow down that healing process actually a lot. So try to avoid that right now in this phase. The seventh way to get over an ex if you're still having feelings for him is to date when you're ready. Date when you're ready, not date because you're lonely. Date when you're ready, not date because you're single. Date when you're ready. I cannot express to you how much people skip this step and they think that, oh, I'm gonna get over my ex by filling the hole and dating another guy. Nah, girl, you're just gonna bleed <laughs> all over the new guy and it's gonna be a repeat of the same pattern. So you need to make sure that you date when you're ready, when you're ready, when you're, I'm not even saying that you have to be a thousand million percent healed, but when you hear and see and remember this person, are you still triggered? Do you still get angry? Do you get mad? Do you get sad? Do you get whatever? If you have massive adverse effects to hearing that person's name, seeing their picture, hearing anything about them, that means you ain't ready, boo. One of the indicators that I always knew for myself internally that I was ready to move on from an ex is when I heard the person's name, I seen their picture, or I was connected with somebody that we mutually knew and I had no emotion and no feeling towards it. Like I can see him scrolling on social media with his new boo or whatever and I would feel nothing. I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> and this wasn't no like suppressed. It was like, oh yeah, I did the work. I'm over this fool, okay? And so if you can't see those things and you don't have a major adverse effect, then this is an indicator to me that you still have some work to do. So date when you're ready, not because you are lonely. The eighth way to get over your ex if you still have feelings is positive affirmations. I know this is a little cheesy, but I promise you positive words and positive affirmations, positive self-talk, whatever the verbiage you want to use, is the GOAT. <laughs> it is the go-to thing that you need to do in order to help yourself get over this ex. And I'm saying that because sometimes, depending on the circumstances of the breakup, it may have put you in a sad state. It may have made you depressed. It may have made you lose your confidence, your self-worth, your self-love. All of those things could be indicators, right? And sometimes you got to gas yourself up, as I say. You have to remind yourself that you are beautiful, that you will find love again, that you are amazing, that you are fill in the blank whatever it is that applies to you specifically and not only just think those things but say them out loud i know y'all probably like what yeah yes say them out loud to yourself if you got to put them on a sticky note and put them around the mirror in your bathroom or whatever to remind yourself do that because you are going to make yourself feel so good because you are going to love yourself on a higher level how are we going to expect somebody else to love us if we don't love ourselves well the ninth way to get over your ex if you still have feelings is to keep yourself busy. 
Now, I'm not talking about busy stuff just so you can avoid not thinking about it. I'm talking about continuously remember that you are a whole separate individual before you met that fool, okay? Before the breakup, you had wants, needs, likes, desires, goals, passion, life goals, career goals, family goals. You had things that you wanted to do and that you needed to do. If you got off track on that for some reason, get back on track, boo. If you need to go back to school, go back to school. If you need to start a new career, if you need to move cities, if you want to have that, whatever it is, get back on track and focus on you, boo. Truly really engage in those activities and those hobbies and those things that bring you joy. Focus on yourself with the things that bring you the most joy. The 10th way to get over your ex if you're still having feelings for him is to give it time. I don't necessarily feel like people give the best advice in regards to this one because people think, well, time heals everything. And no, time does not heal everything. What happens is what you do with the time determines if you are healed or not. If you just sit down and wait for the six months, the one year, the five years to go by and you don't do the work, you're gonna be in the same space that you were when the breakup first happened. But if you are doing the things that we are talking about in this video, I can guarantee you the time will matter and it will be well spent because you worked on yourself, you're implementing those things, you're getting better, and that's going to put you in a space to find the person that you're really supposed to be with in the first place. And to be honest, the whole time frame is just to be patient with yourself. Give yourself grace. There is no set time frame of when you're supposed to get over an ex. I've seen people get over an ex quickly and genuinely get over that person fairly quickly. And then I've literally seen other people go through this for years before they get over an ex. I've seen people go through it for months before. There is no definitive timeline that everyone has to follow. Your plan, your timeline, that is for you. That is your own individual individual journey. So don't compare yourself to what your friend did. Don't look to the right or to the left. Just know that your process is your process and that's okay. The next way to get over your ex if you still have feelings is to seek professional help. Now y'all know I wouldn't be a licensed therapist if I did not introduce or reinforce the importance of therapy for you guys. Some of you guys may be able to go through this breakup not getting professional help and just going through it alone or with your support system and that's fine. I'm not here to judge you but there's other people that won't. There's other people who need that additional professional support, whether that's a therapist, a coach, whatever you choose to do. If this breakup is adversely, negatively impacting your life for long periods of time, you're finding that you can't shower, you're finding that you're not eating or you're eating too much, you're not sleeping, you're not going to work, you're doing blah, blah, blah. If you're finding that you are not feeling like yourself for a long period of time, it's time to seek professional help and there's no shame in that. Last but not least, number 12, the 12th way to get over your ex if you're still having feelings is to forgive and to forget. Y'all probably not gonna wanna hear this one because y'all not in the right space. <laughs> Forgiveness is not about the other person and what they did, it's about you. It's about letting go of the hurt, letting go of the grievances, letting go of the things that might potentially hold you back so you can keep this thing moving and keep pushing through life with all of the positive coping skills and all of the lessons that you've learned. You're just gonna keep going further and further and not allowing the hurt, the pain, the guilt, the shame, the anger, the cheating, the disappointment to hold you back from this relationship. And let's be clear, whatever the reason why the breakup happened, I'm not excusing that behavior. I'm not saying that it's okay. I'm not saying that they should have or they could have gotten away. I'm not saying any of that because it was probably a very raggedy, jacked up, messed up situation. You probably didn't deserve any of the things that you went through, but forgiveness is a necessary part of this process. Forgive, but don't forget. That means I forgive you, I release you, I let you go. Whatever you did to me, I'm not holding on to it, but I'm gonna remember <laughs> not to let you back into my life. I'm going to remember the hurtful things that happened so I won't do that in the next relationship. I'm not going to forget all of the things that transpired. I'm not gonna be boo-boo the fool, okay? I'm gonna forgive you, I'm gonna release you and let you go, but I'm gonna remember and not forget some of those things because they were definitely learning lessons for the future. So honestly, this video was way longer than I intended for it to be but my final thoughts on this is I understand that breakups are hard it's a lot 
Um, it's a lot to go through. It's a lot to recover from. And most people don't intentionally want to go through a breakup. But I understand that it feels like it's the hardest thing that you will ever have to do. And I want to empathize with that. I understand. I've been there before. And I've worked with a lot of couples and individuals who have gone through breakups and divorces. And it is the hardest thing to do to unwind your heart, your body, your mind, your soul from another person, especially if you thought that it was going to, quote unquote, be long term or last forever. And so you just have to make sure that you're focusing on you during this time. It's OK to want a relationship again in the future, to love again, to keep trying to eventually start dating. I think all of those things are healthy and true. But work on you now so you can have a beautiful, fulfilling, long lasting relationship later. So thank you so much for watching another episode of Keeping It Real with Keandra. I hope you learned something in this video. If you did, don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and I will see you in the next episode. Be blessed. Bye.